you have to embrace greater qualities one step at a time to embrace the next level of miracle making, so to speak. Did you know we are evolutionarily set up so that when we grow beyond our limitation from yesterday, our size and capacity of emanating vibrations, frequencies, beliefs, capacities, talents, we become a greater being. And that is what creates happiness. It's the becoming greater, ever so small, but ever so much greater than before. Welcome to Living in 5D with your host, Peter D. Welcome to Living in 5D. I'm your host, Peter D. And we've got a special treat today. Ilona Selke is joining us all the way from Bali at her Shambhala Retreat Center. Ilona, say hi, please. Hi. Welcome. Thank you very much, Peter. I am really happy to meet you in this dimension. And I love how you introduce living in 5D. That's the last words we spoke just before we went on camera, right? That we are living in the world of our own creation. Amen. Amen. So Ilona has the uh, has spent over a thousand hours with dolphins. She speaks multiple languages and has a new book that empowers anyone to transform their life and the world. It's called Dream Big. The universe is listening. So Ilana, why don't you add to that and tell everybody a little bit about yourself and then we'll dive into what living in 5D is like. All right. Well, when I was born, I was born in the Himalayas and my mom always felt she picked me up in India when my husband, my father and her traveled through India for three months and taught me yoga and alternate nostril breathing, the yogic breath when I was just five years old. So I have to tell you, I come from a family where my grandfather said, so-and-so is coming, let's open the gates and we would open the gates and then so-and-so would drive in. Nice, so I, nice. I, yes, yes. So even though my grandfather told us that he was an absolute non-believer he changed his mind when my grandmother had, um, I think you call it uh, gutlos, a, a form of herpes, uh, shingles, and they took her to a healer because nothing helped. When they arrived at the healers, and this is a part of who I am, so I'm telling the stories to all of us to shift and understand the 5D living through storytelling a little bit, okay? Beautiful. They, so they arrived, and my grandfather was told, please leave the room. You're a non-believer, and this would interfere the tr with the treatment. So he left the room. <laughs> I worked worked on my grandmother, and she got better overnight. So from then on, my grandfather became a believer, and then he taught us the adage of there are many things between heaven and earth that we cannot explain, yet we can experience. See, so that is, is beautiful. That is yeah. just beautiful, because that's where we are today, in my yeah. understanding, as we're going through this ascension shift. And more and more is opening up to us. And I meet people right and left who sit there and say, well, I got to know this and how it works and what's happening. I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't have to know how a car works to get in and drive it. Right. Let's just take off and go on the adventure. So Ilona, can you talk a little bit about the adventure you're on? Right. So let's fast forward that. I, my mom always taught me, live whatever your heart's desire is and money will follow. So that's what I did. And then I went with my then husband, my husband, when I met, whom I met when I was 21, moved to America from Germany because I'm German born. That's my other one of my languages. And we looked for a time traveler. We found a time travel machine. Cool. It's a radionic machine, which does very similar things. So nowadays, we even have farmers in China, in South America, in Central America, North America, Russia, Germany, who use all over the world, Australia, who use a radionic machine, which is giving people a technical way of sending information at a distance, entangling the moment now with the future in at a distance and shift physical reality. They're on our one of our websites, se-5.com. You can see two flowers 
sitting, not two bunches of flowers sitting in two different vases. One is ordinary tap water, one is charged with information to have things that would promote longevity of the flower. And then a time lapse film over 276 hours, so quite a long time, watching the flower's behavior. These start wilting after these still stay and stay and stay. And eventually these wow. two start wilting a long time later. This is flower, a bunch of flowers had only received informational water that was informed through a principle of radionics and scalar technology, which imprints intention into matter. But I say, and this is what I love to teach, is we can do this with our own brain. We have our own scalar antenna. We tap into the higher dimensions. As long as we know and understand that it can be done, even you don't have to resort to like my grandfather, just belief, I mean, or well, in that time that worked, but our modern mind is a little bit technical, which is why I'm giving us right now a technical way of accessing that world. There is a there are machines you can type in, you say, this is what I want and or read, you know, um, you can get information right. from a distance, like how is this person's well-being on this level? How is right, right. So um, that's a technical way of getting there. I love to rely on my own brain power, which is sometimes better than others. Some days we are more on than others and are more in tune and we're not always vibrating hum at the highest vibration. We drop sometimes, we're tired, we get agitated, we rise again. But the thing we have to remember is 5D or multidimensional living is happening all of the time. We just choose to open that door and then miracles happen. I'm first... totally with you on that. I'm yeah. totally with you on that. Our guest today is Ilona Selke, and you can contact her at ilonaselke.com. The links will be below. There will be classes, books you can get, just beautiful, beautiful uh, materials you can access. And Amazing. Free of charge, my book, Wisdom of the Dolphins, all the magical stories around dolphins, telepathy, and the power to heal through the mind. Yeah, it's right there. So please check it out. And what I really enjoyed is you're talking about using your mind to create. Now, I, I, I know that there's technology that can be very, very useful. I love technology and I love mm -hmm. how technology can assist consciousness. One of my teachers, Ramtha, when I was at the Ramtha school, was said, never rely on things. Do it yourself. Yes. And that's what yes, he would did. teach. And that yes. was kind of kind of cool there too uh it was kind of interesting today i just recorded a channel from uh, saint germain and saint germain was talking about prosperity being available to everyone but most of us don't let it in because we don't have a mental set for receiving it the job or the reval or something external that's supposed to happen so what i love what you said this is twice in a day it's come to me is if you open up yourself to what's possible and use your consciousness, you can then can create your reality. So please, you're blowing me away, Alona. Tell me more can stories of using your power to create. Yes. And I would like to intersect right here because a lot of people go like, well, I imagine the better job, the car, the money, and hey, I'm not seeing it. I have guided people 35 years through manifestation. And I can tell you, there are two things that happen to people. One, they go like, wow, the magic, it's going to work. I'll just open up. I believe it. I trust it. And they give it their open heart. The other one is, let's just see if the water is boiling. It's not yet boiling, is it? Patience, endurance. <laughs> the third most important part in making something happen is that you yourself or we ourselves are sure and we feel that sense of certainty Yes, I believe that that will happen. Barring that the universe may not have an even better plan, which is the ability to let go to a greater arrangement of plan, which is how our retreat center happened. I just said somebody is going to have a school there, a wisdom school, because I wanted, I didn't want pigs and football games going on next to the house we'd bought here on the beach. I wanted some quiet and beautiful gardens there. Somebody is going to build that beautiful retreat center there. It wound up being ourselves that I had not intended. 
but I had always said I want my own ashram when I was in my early mid twenties. Let me. So you manifested you that too. But it was twenty some years later. It was somewhere in stored in that big uh, cache of my universal consciousness. So be aware the different thoughts you have. So let me share with you a story that I shared on a TEDx talk recently. Please do, where, please do. Yes, I wanted to really swim with dolphins. And I'm going to tell you a story that was challenging. Yeah. So I'm, I'm in the water. I'm going, dolphins, I see you. I feel you. You can be so close to me. Well, it took a while, but eventually I'm in Florida. Dawn is swimming this close to the dolphins. I'm sparing you a longer story before that, right? Me, however, the dolphins are like no closer than two bodies length. I'm going, what's wrong with me? Why is Dawn getting to swim so close and not me? I mean, is there something wrong with me? So I'm like going, go home at night and I go, okay, I know what to do. Re-envision how it would feel if a dolphin was this close to you. And that's when I realized the deeper answer. I actually got scared imagining a dolphin that close. Ah. Then when I was in the, in the water and dolphins came this close to dawn, I was like, back off, back off. It's too close. Do we wonder why the dolphins listen to my command, right? Don't get that close, close enough, but not that close. My husband didn't have that subconscious sentence. So what did I have to do? I had to go like, what? I asked myself, and I want you to all remember this sentence. What do I really want? And when I tuned in, imagining the dolphin that close and being scared, I realized, you know, I don't really want that, right? I'm actually scared. What does my fear really want? And it said, you know, I want you to be safe. My God, you never know. These are living beings. They're like giant underwater, you know, 300 pounds, 12 feet long. I mean, that's gigantic bottlenose dolphins underwater, even bigger than above water. So I visualized much like athletes do when they throw the balls through the hoop, right? It's going to yep. work. It's happening. It's going to work. It's happening with the added feeling of what I really wanted, which was to feel safe while swimming so close to dolphins. As if by magic, the next time's around, and I tell a beautiful story at the TEDx talk, but the dolphin comes this close. Actually, comes so close, I can see one, his, one, his, one of his tooth hanging out. I, I called him pirate because he looked a little... Did you get like to kiss it? Come on, I need to know. No, 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 no. <laughs> Howard Stern in an interview with me told me, did you, did you do him? I mean, I'm like, please, Howard, I know you're all... No, alone. not that, but come on, yeah, dolphins I right know. here. <laughs> but you know they don't they don't do what you see in the trained behavior in swimming pools it's they don't when they open their mouth in the pools and look like they're laughing that's what dolphins do underwater to say stay away from me literally uh. they open their mouth and they clap it and it makes sound and dolphins hear really well so when they clap their jaws underwater and they make an aggressive behavior and they say, go away, I'm going to eat you. <laughs> no, I'm going to make a loud sound that is supposed to drive everybody a little bit further away. So if a dolphin came to me looking friendly, like it was laughing, I was like, back off cattle. They did. Yeah. What I love that. about your story, what I love mm. about what you've mm. done, and, and I hope everybody listening to this can, can follow this. First of all, you got clear about what you wanted. Then you looked inside your unconscious to see what was keeping you from it. And that then you've allowed expression and instantly you moved into manifestation. I think that's well, a beautiful yes. summary of the power that you dis that you display in your life. So let's turn it down into three easy to remember words in that one sentence. Great. When, when in a difficult situation, stop. Step out of the picture as though you can look at the situation from a distance, which disentangles you from the scenario, from the feelings, and you can go like, what's really going on? Okay, I'm angry. I see that. I'm scared. Okay, I got that. Now, tune into your body and feel that unnice feeling. In my case, it was fear. 
like oh, too close for comfort my god they could beat me he you know who knows what <laughs> big teeth <laughs> big teeth then i go where do i feel that you know we are and this is what i love about feeling your intuition and your gut level because it will always tell you the truth your body doesn't lie it tells you and that is your primary brain the feeling center the ganglia respond and when something contracts, we feel it as uncomfortable feelings. So feeling it, giving it color, shape, or form, and saying, oh, I get you. Be, re you know, just as if it's something that you can talk to. What do you want? What do you really want? Based on Dr. Vern Wolf's work, Holodynamics, this is what I've practiced worldwide for 35 years with amazing results. I mostly teach therapists, teachers, trainers, but lay people also. And by communicating with the unconscious sensation, we can now not cognitively, but feeling wise, dive into the level of our subconscious thoughts and get it to say what it really wants, which is I want to be safe. Ah, what would that feel like if you already were there? See, we're talking multidimensional action at distance, so to speak, because everything we see outside of us is a reflection to something inside, like the Hermetian uh, uh, from Hermes, the golden rules that were etched into the golden uh, green tablets, and as above, so below, as within, so without. And that adage, if you change one side, you will change the other side, applies to our multidimensional living at any frequency. You don't have to be a saint at any point in order to apply this technique. You can do it wherever you are. In fear, in anger, it will work. And you go, ah, I see what you want, feeling safe. How would that look like? And foremost, how would that feel like? So then you have two realities, the old one and the new one. And there is a law that when you are managing to find the corresponding, true correspondence of its higher frequency expression, you can absorb it and say, oh, let's come home, guy. Oh, you want to become this. This is what it really wants, right? This fear really wants to be safe. Come on in. Let's become one. And then it flows through my nervous system. And then I can envision truly what I really want, my dolphin close in contact, with the feeling that is in 100% in overlap. Now I have the closeness of the dolphins as well as the feeling of feeling safe. Imaginarily, but my subconscious body system is for a moment able to hold that frequency. I love that it. is how I step myself up, yoke myself into higher dimensions, using whatever I have in the moment. It doesn't I love require that. ignoring it. Yep. Because what so, you're talking about for me is I'm I'm always a big believer in oneness. And you know, I'm always talking about being one with all around you. And you're talking about being one with what's going on inside you, yep. what you desire and what you're really feeling unconsciously in the moment and then merging those two and unfolding and it's beautiful so and our guest today is will... <laughs> our guest today is ilona selke uh, the website is ilonaselke.com check the links below you can sign up for a free app that provides meditation brief 12-minute meditations morning and evening lots of other beautiful tools so could you speak more about your journey into oneness because you're different than me. You were like raised meditating. <laughs> you were born in the right place. You know, I was I was raised in the middle of a religious war where my parents would beat me if I didn't go get the correct response to the correct parent with the correct religion. <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah. so I had none of that to deal with. So tell me what it's like to, from your perspective, the time we live in, the oneness we're experiencing. Well, okay. So let's start with Heisenberg the principle of the whole and the parts. In quantum physics, for example, they are saying we have the particle reality, we have the wave reality, and that is still two sides of the same coin, but it is an expression that the wave contains the many drops, right? So how do we apply it in our own lives? I remember when I was 19, I started, 17 when I started meditating, 1920, I was training to be a flight attendant to work for two years to make enough money to study philosophy in America. So I am sitting there in my hotel bedroom because I was just starting out going, where are you? 
God, where are you? And I took this journey up in an imaginary filament of light, an elevator to the center of creation. And bit by bit, over time, there was a moment when I felt like, oh, I am in the stratosphere of the planet. Then I remember I'm in the world of the moons and the stars. And then I remember, and these were all stages of becoming accustomed to the visions within. There was a moment where I was like, I was simultaneously the me that perceived entering into the allness. And the easiest way, and this is how I met my husband, the easiest way I've found, even for a beginner, and I think that's why we have teachers do it, for me was when I practiced this very same movement with another person. And when the two overlapped our awareness and rose to the same center of creation, but by having someone else do it, I was able to then go, ah, oh, that's where they are. And then eventually there was a moment where I lost the sense of who am I and where are they? And it became the kaboom of it all. And when I take people through that journey of picking, in Tibetan Buddhism, people pick a deity. Um, Christians do it too. They've picked deities and merge with them. When you merge with one another in quantum physics, if you have duality and put it into singularity, singularity happens because it's inbred in all that is. There is one source. There is not five different gods walking around on planet Earth, you know. It's one source. And that source is, for some people, a little bit nebulous and too far out. And so they try to put prophets in between angels to communicate with that source. Technically. <laughs> too scared of the dolphin getting close. Right. Yes, that's it. Too scared for being for a moment absorbed and loss of self. And truthfully, it is so gargantuanly beautiful. There is so much love. God wants, or that source, wants all of us to remember because it's a two-way street. It's creation. Created all of its forms to be like the expression and the feedback system, ideally, to go return back to its source. And so it becomes a co-creative process. That which is looking outside of your eyes is the same that you're looking at when you return your gaze. But when we do it consciously, and when we hook up, so to speak, to the mother center, to load of it all, plugging in our electrical cords to the core, that is when there is a direct connection. And for a moment, that sense of separation ceases to exist. And we are imbued with more potency. And your manifestations will happen with greater ease when you have that direct union connection. And it is where, yes, I feel you. I, I sense that you're entering that state and we all tap into it. And it's the one communicating back and forth through the million eyes that we all are, including the many billion of ants. We are the same form living in whatever it can be. And your choice can make it heaven on earth or whatever you wish it to be. Let's talk more about choice, if you will, because to me, what you're saying is beautiful. Uh, it's a little sciencey, and I love science, and I followed it for a long time. But now I try not to go on the science route because it distracts me. Because I've been able to achieve those moments that you talk about, where you're in that field and you're just connected, and it is so beautiful. And you know, at that point, I always go in with these serious questions, and then I get there, and I'm like. There's no questions anymore. Right. <laughs> I'm Absolutely. already here. Yeah. So let's talk about the choices you make to approach the field, the choices you make to in life, you know, if you will, so to speak, uh, that uh, help you get in touch with the expansive, magnificent self that you are. Well, as you're speaking, the very first thought that comes to me in the understanding and memory of what do I do when I want to open up and I may not be in that state, I go, what is beautiful around me right now? Mm. And just look at, appreciate whatever your eyes fall on. It could be a candlelight, it could be a leaf, a flower, 
and you look at it and you go, oh my God, a miracle. Oh my God, that's a beautiful color, anything. And your heart <laughs> and energy starts softening. Next, you start thinking, do that for five minutes. Everything you can land your eyes on go, oh my God. And just by being willing to see beauty, you elevate your vibratory state. Then think of things you are grateful for in your life right now. Could be simple things. It could be the great breakfast you had or, or dinner or whatever. It could be the fact that you, whatever it is. I mean, for me, it was just hearing angelic music in my mind. Ah, that whatever comes to you, it can be the fact that you have beautiful children, that you saw a baby smile that day. What you're grateful for. The moment right now to have this chance to have our minds all connect. Mind you, as you are listening right now, there are thousands of other people vibrating with you in the same intention. We are focusing together at some level because we're all going to realize there is something better than meets the eye and that's being sold as the real life, you know, scrolling on TV or something like that. No, vibrating at a higher level and connecting. Let's just imagine there are others right now that are showing and moving into their grateful self, opening the hearts, being grateful for their family members or grateful for others that whether we know each other right now or not are here vibrating together and i'm speaking to you maybe delayed in time maybe a week earlier but right now as you listen to me here i am reaching to you in that time frame and i'm making contact with you we are in the field that transcends separation it transcends uh, time and space and it's beautiful when you acknowledge in it the first time it happened to me mm. i was just out of my teens, I was just in my early 20s and I was hitchhiking across the US. And I used to magic when I do magic, when I hitchhike, put my right, thumb out, I get yes. a ride within moments or seconds. And, you know, I'd travel yeah. across the country. I'd always have more money in my pocket than my left. It was fast, it was beautiful, it was easy. Then one day it wasn't. Mm -hmm. I was under this underpass for like almost two hours and I didn't get a ride and it was hot and it was stinky and everything. And the traffic was going by and nothing was nice. And I turned the corner of my eye and I saw in this one oil slick, a small little flower just starting to grow. And as soon as I put that, my attention on that flower, instantly ride came yes. and I was back in the flow. It, and that was when it, I first realized that what you're talking about is mm. so powerful that yes. you'd make the choice to one, notice what's beautiful around you and then two, give the attitude of gratitude, that beautiful vibration. Can you speak more about gratitude? I've heard yes, that people who measure frequency say that love is pretty high, but gratitude is actually a higher frequency. Could you share with me what you know about gratitude? Well, I do know it's the doorway. Looking at beauty, being grateful, it opens your vibration. And there are steps you can take, but it gradually raises you. Um, Let's try it out. Let's just take three things you're grateful for in your life. And let me close my eyes. You can close your eyes for a moment and just think of the first thing that comes into your mind that you're grateful for. And whatever it is, it doesn't have to be grand, anything. Simple, easy, just feel into it and receive it and go, ah, oh, that is so amazing. Dive into it for a moment. Allow a little vacation into your gratitude. And if you made this thing even a little bit bigger in your mind, just dove closer with the uh, magnifying glass and allowed all of your cells to sense that sense of, wow, I am blessed. When you open up to that feeling of being blessed, you start opening up to the emanations of the higher frequencies, the divine entering you, making that connection, feeling worthy of the divine love is I think one of the principal techniques to raise your vibration and be willing to receive miracles. It's that sense that we are a miracle. We are the miracle, the 
universe the divine created and opening up to it is what we can do to receive the gifts waiting and when we feel worthy when we are realizing that my gratitude makes me worthy it's it's an automatic give and receive your uh your higher heart chakra starts opening not just your personal love and i love my grandchildren and my babies and who i love life i love the greater you enter the angelic form of love it is in the upper chest it's a um the thyroid it's the no, not the thyroid the um hypo uh, 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 uh. i'll think of it i just call it the high heart the high heart <laughs> yes high heart will i mean literally will start vibrating the more you practice it and people in seminars where i've taught them to look at each other's angelic self or higher self pretending to see only the goodness for a moment in the other they start it and then start rising above your head and then start pretending you can see if I were to do that with you, Peter, right now. Not the you, but the the, the essence of you, right? If I start noticing that form of you, I can embellish it, make it beautiful in my mind if I think I'm imagining it. However, I will start feeling an openness, a willingness to be more connected to you, which is, by the way, the technique that if you are in a relationship and want more love, start seeing your partner and making that a mutual exercise maybe at this other place that doesn't have shape or form in the normal sense, but you sense each other's presence. That's what, when you said um, the sense of unity, when my husband and I first met and we meditated, I did that with him and I entered into a oneness state and I thought that is my soulmate. Entering into oneness, you can do with many more people. And so I just want to encourage all of us, imagine yourself as a beautiful being. And with that comes a sense of bringing something to the world, just even your love of gratitude. And therefore, we become worthy of receiving. And it's the very first step to create this back and forth space stair-stepping up into higher vibration. But even at the first step, you live a multidimensional existence. That is 5D already in action. It just gets more and more and more magical as we go on. And it's beautiful because it's measurable. You can actually subscribe to the Heart Math Institute. You can buy a heart rate variability monitor. Right. And you can actually test what's going on in the field of your heart as you hold these different thoughts and see the variance go down and the co uh, cohesion, yes. the coherence go up. And so this is measurable science that uh, right. we're getting, that you're sharing with us today, uh, Ilona. And yeah. I just want to thank you for that because it's so important to keep hearing it because it's so far away from the reality of what most people are teaching. Well, the heart math from, um, and winter that measurement and the coherence becoming coherent between the breath body rhythm brain waves i mean we can lower our brain waves by going into imaginary worlds and become coherent and the greater coherence we create the more potency we have to impress our energetic images into the ether so if you can lower your brain wave states and to create a greater focus uh, the heart rate, heart rate variability then becomes equally spaced apart. With most people, especially slightly under stressed, we have like the heartbeat yeah, yeah, comes yeah. and goes. Even though we think it's kind of regular, it's actually really irregular. And when we go into imagination, regular breathing, you can measure it with um, the, the heart math devices. So you can pay a lot of money rate. and get all technical. Or you could be oh. practicing with what Ilana is just sharing with you at this moment, all right, and just start to have the miracles. And the what I love is that you know people will have miracles happen, and then they'll 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 contact me and say, uh, "I just need some proof about what's going on." I'm like, "Didn't you just tell me you had that experience?" Yeah, and they're like, but no, the dolphin is too close. <laughs> okay, yeah, right, right. So yeah. it's like, uh, what I love about your talking is you've immersed yourself in that field and you live in it and you help many, many others achieve their potential. I, 
Yes. So I hear someone saying, tell us a miracle story. I don't know what the most far out miracle story was in my life. Yeah. One I wrote up in my book, Dolphins Love and Destiny. Impossible. Don and I have just arrived in our secondary home in Hawaii. We lived just yeah, close to Dolphin Beach for 12 years. Um, we live on an island north of Seattle where we have our main hub. And arrived there is a forest reserve there i'm driving up in that small street that is our street there were three junk cars parked and i'm like going i've been all around the world i've taught i've done my best god i do not deserve this this is ridiculous the neighbor comes out she says i have tried for three months to call the authorities nobody's coming to pick these up which was typical for Hawaii, sadly to say, they just left the cars to rot on the side of the road and no municipality cared about it. Grass grew over it 20 years later, it was still there. So I'm going, this is a no-go. I set up my altar, my little meditation place. I sit down and go, okay, I am going to imagine I have a clean road. And so what I want to share with you right now is something that you can remember when making a choice. What is absolutely important to you? Make that a magic exercise. Because I tell you where you are invested and in what you really want, not like I want the castle to live in maybe someday or something you really want. I wanted a clean street. I sit down, I close my eyes and I imagine the street is in the perfect condition where I want it to be, which is clean no cars there, so clean. Not no cars there, because my mind didn't want to just draw X's, it saw the end result. Project yourself into the future timeline that you want to occupy. Step one. Step two, really imagine it. It is now already happening. You have stepped literally in your mind into the future now. The street is clean. This is the moment where I want the dolphins close to me, da, 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 da. You listen to the parts of you that say 100% yes or not yes yet. If there is a not quite yet, sure, I deserve this, then deal with that insecure feeling like I did with the dolphins too close. But in this case, I had done all the work in the world. I felt I deserved a clean road. Sit down, feel it. And then I did what spelling bees do really well. Do you know how spelling bees, those are the people who spell 100% perfectly, what they do and how they do it? They feel it in the center of the column of their spinal column, that certitude. And I waited and I said, it is done. Fait accompli. I can believe it. Suddenly, I hear crunching metal noises. And I go, oh my God. I think they could already be picking up the cars. I mean, seriously, that would be very fast. I go, we're not putting up the lid from the pot yet to look if the water is boiling. We're just going to let it be. It's going to be done. I'm done with my meditation. I go unpack my suitcase. We have to go shopping that evening. We go out to our favorite Italian restaurant. I didn't even care to look if the cars were gone or not. I just drove out like, you know, have it. Just drove. That's it. Come back. The street is clean no yeah. cars yes a miracle now there are people who've said i want uh three quarter of a million dollars in three weeks with the living from vision course they got it i have had people who i mean i've had the gamut from simple to outrageous choices when you feel you deserve it it's yours and you can with 100 percent certainty Feel it, the multidimensional timelines open, line up with you, and you are there. See, it's almost like you jump a time. You jump the probabilities of all the things that we think we have to go through to arrive at the destination. Right. I always do it like this at the end. God willing, higher or better than this. I let go of the, how does it get there? I'm not going to necessarily... Although I encourage people to do practical steps in a day-to-day -day fashion, you know, if you write a book, actually start sitting down at your computer and type, right? I mean, <laughs> but it'll probably be a natural desire in you by then. It'll probably start flowing or come out or the right, like I, 
I wrote my book and I said, yes, universe, I'm listening. I was, they were like, we need this book written about dolphins. I said, I'll do it. Somebody comes to my house and said, touches the manuscript and says, this will go places. I will give it to someone. I had other people next to me. We were three authors writing a book on the same theme. And we were all like going, yes, yes, yes. One person said, I will be an Oprah. I will be an Oprah. I don't think she ever got to Oprah. She got her book out. She got into her sphere. I simply feel that at times, and I'm going to say this to all of us, that there are higher forces that sometimes ask you to do something for the benefit of humanity. And Service. if you say yes, and you serve it, you serve the higher purpose in your goal, it'll be even more successful. That I can add. I mean, those are the super miracles where you. I'm like, totally with you. I'm totally yeah. with you on all this. I love it. I love hearing your story because you know I've had experiences when when I've learned about miracles in different ways. One of them was at uh, one this university where there where every day they would talk about a saint and miracles he performed and or she performed, and we look at it. And at the end, what did they all have in common? And it was exactly what you said. They Which knew that was the reality. They knew it. And when they were telling about how do you how do you approach your miracles, like when you get on a plane to go fly somewhere, you don't go start knocking on the door of the pilot. Do you got this? Are you getting me there? Are we taking the right route? No, you sit in your seat and you relax because you know you're in transportation to your miracle. Uh, Speaking of airplanes, I did another miracle. I was sitting in an airplane and the airplane was not taking off. And I had to teach a seminar in Hawaii the next day day or the two days from then when I arrived the next day what to do they said oh we can't find the problem blah, blah blah and I said let me see what happens when I don't do anything hours later we still had the same problem we're sitting there they think well be prepared we might have to deplane that's when I thought okay time for me to check miracle making and I sit down and I go where is the problem? And in my mind, I looked and I saw it on the fuselage, fuselage of the um, big engine. And I thought, okay, fixed. I can see it being fixed. It's done. It's a done deal. I wanted to see before and after my scientific testing of what happens when I just let a habit go, take over and what happens when I start asking the universe for the end result that I actually want to be in, like script my own movie, right? Suddenly the voice comes on and says, oh, uh, miracle over miracles, my words now, <laughs> we found the problem, it was in the fuselage and it's fixed and we're leaving in an hour. <laughs> That's so beautiful. Because I said, look, universe, I need to arrive. I have a need that is a need. I want this with 100%. So next time you think of a miracle or want anything in your life, please ask yourself, do I really want this? Listen right. to all the parts of you, because there are plenty of people who say, I want a million dollars. I do it in my seminars. What do you want to do with a million dollars? Oh, I want to give it away. So I'm really nice. And then people like me, you know, it's like, as right. Soon so as they really they want us to be nice and liked, <laughs> liked. Yeah. And feel like they're being good. So I said, start now, give a dollar away, help pick up that, you know, lady from the street or the dropped clothing in the department store. Be nice wherever you are. Create, and this is the maze <laughs> for multidimensional living, I tell you, create a good, clean conscience. Yep. Do the right yep. things. Eat the things you think you should be eating. Don't drink the things you shouldn't be drinking. Do the things you feel are true and right for you. Yeah. That your I love, higher self is whispering to you. I love what Sorry. you're saying too. When I was at the ramp, the School of Enlightenment, they would have us do all kinds of things to create the future. And not find where it is, not use your senses to find a path to it, but to simply create it. Yeah. The thing I resonated most with was blindfolded archery at 50 yards. Mm. Now, most people do blindfolded archery at six feet, right? This is 50 yards. This is serious stuff. And <laughs> and what I love oh, about the, the Ram was that he would teach things by saying, okay, this can be done. Now go out and do, do it. it. All right, And that's it. That's the only instruction you had. Just work at it until you know how to do it. Right? Yeah. And so... The instruction was to not see the target hitting, right? See the arrow hitting the target. The target, the instruction was 
know you've already hit the target. Yep. I've already done this and I let it go. And, you know, so I would shoot a flight of 10 arrows and I would get, you know, one or two would be hitting the, hitting the target and I'd get one or two bullseyes and I'd take them home and put them up on my wall because wow. I could look and say, I hit a target blindfolded at 50 yards. I can do anything. And so this is important when you know you can complete a miracle. I can do this. And you just see it and hold it. And you hold it like the truth, like those uh, saints and sages I studied, which is they know it was already done. Yes. So there are goals and feelings we can say yes to in a hundred percent. So start out with those. Start out where you say, all of you says yes. Later on, pick those where it takes evolution within you in order to arrive at that destination. Because truthfully, manifestation is not simply about getting all your wishes fulfilled. It is about you becoming a better person. And every goal we set is sort of like that carrot that a donkey sees in front of his nose. It requires that you become a greater being. You have to embrace greater qualities one step at a time, to embrace the next level of miracle making, so to speak. So whatever it takes, it's not just about, okay, I got that, 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 but I am becoming the greater and greater being one step at a time. That is what brings us happiness. Did you know we are evolutionarily set up so that when we grow beyond our limitation from yesterday, our size and capacity of emanating vibrations, frequencies, beliefs, capacities, talents, we become a greater being. And that is what creates happiness. It's the becoming greater, ever so small, but ever so much greater than before. Evolution rewards us with the feedback feeling of joy and happiness when we grow. That's I'm definitely stealing that from you because my website is called Becoming Awesome. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and now it's it's the evolution of happiness is what you've explained it. Nice. Our guest today is Ilona Selke. The website is ilonaselke.com. Check it out for books and classes and so much more. We're going to wrap this interview up. So what would the parting words you'd like to pass along? Well, when I was interviewed by Jack Canfield in Hollywood Live, he said, what would be your message? Imagine all of us right now. Let's be your older self, your more mature, your grander self, your advanced self. Having a message for you or you being that person. Step into those shoes for a second. Step into that being that you're going to become and be it now for a moment. And have a message for your younger self. That could be you now or could be you at any time in your evolution. What would your message be to your younger self or your self at this point in time? Hmm. Whatever it is. So my message I got, and I told Jack Hanfield, you know, the author of Chicken Soul for the Soup, uh, <laughs> Soul, Chicken Soup for the Soul. It was dream big. The universe is listening. The universe is listening to us and it wants this two-way street. Dream big. Dare to dream. Because in becoming greater, you're completing your mission of evolution. God wants you or the universe wants you to greater and, and expand yourself to the capacity of touching the oneness, feeling it all, and radiating more love and more light now than ever before into the world around you dream big the universe is listening happens to be the title that's what jack canfield said oh that sounds like a title of a book which and is it funny. is and you can yes. check it out on ilonaselke.com or and amazon i'm just gonna add to that you know one of my monk friends told me what's the biggest thing you can think of mm-hmm. now think bigger all right thank you all for being with us today it's a beautiful time lots of learning lots of love and i just want to thank you for sharing your light Uh, Ilona with everybody and all the blessings you've given us through your books and your courses Uh, and thank you so much for being here thank you